Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on my next enamel pin. I absolutely love the process of designing, creating, and getting the final product of that last enamel pin that I did for my patrons. So I want to do another one that I can sell freely on my shop and in person at the next con that I'm going to, which is in a month. So I really need to get myself in gear and get this enamel pin designed and everything. But I do want to give a really quick announcement. I do have a sale over at my art shop and that's for everything over there, including originals for 20% off. There's no coupon code needed. So you can just head over there and you can see the sale price for everything right off the bat. I am moving on to a new storefront soon. So a lot of the older prints and some newer ones, in fact, will not be moved over. So if you have any that you've been thinking about for a little while, now is a great chance to go get them on sale. So again, I'll have the link right at the very top of my description that'll take you over to the shop. And it does end on tomorrow. So that's August 4th, 2019. So make sure that you go check that out before the sale ends. But anyways, let's jump into the video. So I wanted to show you guys the process and a little bit about how I think through it and a lot of the things that I learned in the process between working on that first enamel pin and working on my second. And I think it's really helpful to be able to work on a different, on a different thing that has different parameters to it, different restrictions, because it actually gets me to think about design in a different way, which means when I go back to working on a painting immediately after these, I can approach it in more of a fresh way rather than relying entirely on the design elements that I always pull out and use because I had to adapt them to an enamel pin. It means that I'm a little bit fresher on, on the take that I can have on that. So for the next pin that I want to produce, I actually wanted to revisit one of my older pieces and give it some new life and, and create it in a, a new product and be able to, to refresh it. So that I was actually an idea that I was really excited about. I thought it would be really fun to adapt something. So I looked through it and the two that I'm working on today on designing is first zombie eyes, which is maybe one of the oldest prints that I still have available at my shop. But I'm, I'm really fond of that one. I love working on that piece. And then later on, I'm going to work on a spring witch enamel pin design in this video. So so the biggest thing that I really had to deal with when it came time to designing this is actually the line width. So unlike when you're just drawing, you can't have this nice, beautiful little taper to the line. It has to have a certain thickness all the way to the very end. So, so that meant that I had to be really thoughtful with the way that I dealt with the line weight to make sure the areas that needed to be more delicate, like the eyelashes and the skull detailing on her face, I had to approach it in a way that it still felt crisp and small and delicate, like I said, without breaking those rules because that, that needs to be there to make sure that the enamel pin still functions correctly and it can be produced as closely as possible to my vision. So so one thing that I, I do really love doing with enamel pins is to really play with the line width. So because that's, that's something that the thinnest is really restrained, the thickest of the lines is not, it means that I can really bulk up certain areas and imply shadows just like I would with normal line work so that I don't have to have as many variations in color, which can add to the cost or anything like that. It just allows me to give it just a little bit more dimension to it, which, which I love doing. I love doing that anyway. So I do really enjoy imagining that the lines that I'm drawing and creating are actually metal like they will be in the pin. So for the two different pin designs, I actually went about a completely different process to get the likeness to the original painting. So for zombie eyes, I originally tried where I actually traced on top of the artwork that I created to get the bones of, of the artwork there. So I could get the eye placement and the profile and the basic shape of the hair, and then I could adapt it and work through it until I got a pin design that I liked theoretically, but it, uh, it ended up being a lot more <laughs> tortured, I guess, than I, than I imagined it where I ended up getting really nitpicky about really small details first and foremost. And then I just kind of got trapped in a loop of really trying to make something that was never really going to work right work. So for that one, I decided that I needed to scrap that and just take 
the the practice that I got from doing that, the the studying that I did of the original, and then just bring it over and create something that had the spirit of the original. But for Spring Witch, I, I tried that same technique again where I just roughly got the placement of everything down first, and it worked out much better for this one. So I don't know, I guess it just depends on, on the artwork, maybe the mood I'm in. But that helped me to just really quickly transcribe the the character over from the painting into an enamel pin design. I I think that this one will work really well as an enamel pin. Her face structure originally in the painting is a lot more simplified and almost like a very stylized, I guess, approach to the face than what I do now. And I think that it works well for the very strictly simple line art and coloring that I can do with enamel pins. So, so excited to see where I can finish off the Spring Witch enamel pin. I did not end up finishing her as much as the Zombie Eyes one for this video, but I, I think I'm going to finish both of them as far as the designing up to completion. And then I might decide on one over the other to produce as a pin first. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to kind of play it by ear and and see where I'm at by the end of this weekend where I can design a couple more enamel pins and then pick my favorite one. I think that's probably one of the things that I love the most about enamel pins is that you just get this really striking design quickly and it just has that life to it where with an illustration or a painting, there's a lot more things that can happen in a piece that can distract from that that initial design concept. So I really enjoy that it's just, I can think of a concept, I can get it down, I can decide if it's good enough to continue and to keep fussing with it and fine tuning in it. And if not, then I can just move on to the next concept or idea. And as far as picking the colors, this is actually a very strange mixture of feeling very tedious, but also really fun because, because I want to make sure that I'm picking out the right colors, but I'm also picking out colors that correspond to the Pantone code so that I know that when they're producing it, it has the exact color that I imagined. It means that I have to figure out what colors that I want and then look in my Pantone color book, which is a resource that you can use so that I know what color it looks like and then my manufacturer will be able to look at their book and compare it directly to that so that we are getting the exact same match rather than looking at say a monitor and that's displaying the colors differently. So, so anyways, so I have to decide what colors I want and then I need to look at the book and find the closest match, find the code and then change the Photoshop version or the Illustrator version so that it matches that code. That way I can see basically how they all look together, how all the, all the colors look together, and then I can create that file to send off. And, and it's just really fun to be able to think of the new colors and then find them in this book. It just feels like I'm picking out little candies, but, but then at the same time, it does mean that I have to carefully type in the number after I pick it out and see how it affects it and then fine tune it over and over and over again. But I, I think I really like that process of feeling like I'm slowly chipping away at it and getting closer and closer to that final version. And that is it for today. Don't forget that I do have the 20% off everything sale over at my shop. There's no coupon needed. And that is going on until the end of tomorrow, Mountain Standard Time. So tomorrow, August 4th, that Sunday. 2019. So go check that out. And for these two enamel pins, I am still tweaking the colors, tweaking the designs. I think I'm going to keep working on them and then let myself take a break from them and come back to them. And that way I can hopefully catch anything that I want to fix before the final design goes off to production. But but yeah, I, I love working on them. I really do enjoy working on designs for things, little things like this. But that's it for today. So I will be back next week with some more art video content. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.